Hey guys, and welcome back. It's Grant Brogy from The Strength Co. And today, I wanna to talk about how and why you should film your lifts. If you like the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Let's first start off with the why. Why would you want to film your own lifts? Well, you might want to film yourself taking off your pump cover to show what you've done in the gym or what you've created over the past year. Whoa! Or you might be trying to make some really, really good thirst trap content for your Instagram. You know, gotta get those followers up. Or you want to flex on your gym bros and show them that you just pulled 315 for the first time or 365 or something that's probably, you know, not as cool as you think it is. But lastly, Hopefully, maybe, possibly, potentially, you are recording your own lifts so that you can get some data. Data. That's right. You're recording your lifts to watch yourself back and see a couple of things. One, how you executed the lift. Is your form good? Is your technique good? Are you doing it correctly? Are there issues you need to fix? And two, what is the bar speed? What is it telling me today? Is this weight moving faster than it was last time? I went up in weight. Is it the same speed as last time? Is it faster? Am I getting stronger? You want to know these things. And maybe you want to know these things because you have a coach. You have an online coach and you're uploading the videos and they're giving you feedback as to what is happening with your lift and making programming decisions for you. Or maybe you've been studying yourself and teaching yourself how to lift weights. Maybe you read Starting Strength or some other book that describes form and technique and how you should conduct the lifts. And you're watching people lift on YouTube and you're comparing yourself to them. I get it. I've been there. And that is part of being self-sufficient. That's part of personal responsibility, knowing how to lift and knowing how to manage your own lifts. I totally get it. You need to get yourself there. I would love to help you. I'm here to help you. That's why we provide all this free content to make your lifting better so that you can get stronger. But Grant won't always be there. There will be a day where you have to lift and you are smarter than you think in terms of what is good form and technique. And a video can help you see if you're achieving these things. You might not know exactly why your knees are shooting forward in the bottom and the squat or why you're not hitting depth or why you're bending your knees when you're pressing overhead or why your bench is coming up off of the bench while you're trying to bench press or why your back is rounded in the deadlift but you're smart enough to know, hey, something's not right here. Now, what I'm gonna show you today is how to film your lifts so that you can get the most out of what you're recording. Or if you have a coach or you're using some type of service, that person that's looking with their trained eye, with their experience under the bar and coaching barbell lifts, can see the most things possible. We offer this service on our online Slack community. It's just $29 a month. You can join, get access to four to five starting strength coaches. There's a forms checks uh, thread in there. You can put your squad in, but let me tell you, if you record it incorrectly, not only are you wasting that coach's time, but they also can't give you as much feedback as they could as if you had filmed it correctly. So, I'm gonna show you how to film your own lifts like a pro. It may not get that thirst trap thing accomplished for you, but at least your squat will get better. Okay, so we do offer an online coaching service where you can come live online on Zoom three times a week and we coach you in real time. Those people, if they can't make the live classes, they can also upload videos. So I'm gonna show you some of my clients and how they film because I taught them how to film and then you can try to replicate the same thing. This is Big James. Big James is out of West Virginia. He's squatting with a Mars bar in order to deal with some shoulder and elbow pain he has. He trains jujitsu a few times a week and we're just gonna notice where his camera angle is. As you look at this, his camera angle is at a rear quarter. So it's not directly from the butt, it's not directly from the front, and it's not directly from the side. The reason I want this view is because I can see the most. I can see his stance. That is, his width is the right width. It's under his shoulders or a little bit outside. I can see his toe angle to make sure that his toes are correct. And as he begins to squat, I can see his back angle as he leans over. I can check his depth from this position. I can see if he has hip drive out of the bottom. You watch there, his hips come up first. I can see the most from a rear quarter. And so James knows this is how I film. Now, notice 
that the camera is not on the floor leaned up against a sparkling water. It's not on the bench with two weights propping it up where the first bottom of the video when you send it to me is all bench. It's not 25 feet away leaned up against a kettlebell. You know what James did? James bought a tripod. And if you're serious about your lifting, whether you're hiring a coach or not, and you want to get stronger, buy a tripod. They're like $20 on Amazon. Just skip your next trip to Chipotle and buy the tripod. And then you won't have to prop it up all the time and record these videos that aren't any good. Get a tripod. Now, once you have your tripod, notice that James set it up as if I were in the room. He's trying to replicate Grant, six foot one and jacked, in the room watching him squat. So it's about six, five to six feet high. It's at full height. It's where my head would be. Now, do I need to see other things sometimes? Yes, of course. There are times with lifters where I say, hey, something's going on funky with your knees. Put your camera directly in front of you and let me see it. Or I can't tell what's happening with you know, your back angle. Let me see something directly from the side. Or have someone hold the camera and film your where the bar is on your back so I can get a better idea if you're in the right location. Of course these things happen, but 90% of the time, and specifically if you're uploading these for someone or you just want to form check somewhere on a free forum, rear quarter on the squat. Film at a rear quarter, head high. Okay, up next, I'm gonna show you how to film your press. We're gonna go all the way to Switzerland and visit my buddy Fred, who's lifting in his garage, or excuse me, in his laundry room. He's like next to the freezer or something. So let's take a look at Fred here, inside his laundry room, performing the press. Now, notice, couple things right away. I can see his feet, and I can pretty much see his lockout. I can't exactly see the weights at the top, but I can see the bar. He's in a confined space, a constricted space, and this may happen to you. So he's actually brought the camera down lower so that I can see the whole kinetic chain from where his feet are in contact with the bar or the floor to where his hands are locked out with the bar overhead. The side profile is a great place to watch the press because as we watch the press, we're able to see if his knees bend, we're able to see in the movement in his hips and if he gets his hips back under the bar at the top, is the bar finishing over the shoulder joint, over the middle of his foot or is it too far back? You can see a whole bunch from the side. A rear quarter can work here as well, but if you can get a side profile or even a front quarter so we can check the bounce in the bar if you're doing a press 2.0, that's super helpful on the press. Okay, up next we're gonna take a look at the deadlift and how you should set up the camera for the deadlift. We're gonna look at our intern here at the Greenville, South Carolina gym, Abigail, and take a look at her deadlift. She trains with us at our gym a few days a week and a few days a week she trains out where she lives. Here she is, set up in a front quarter. A rear quarter could work, but I generally like a front quarter in the deadlift. Here's why. I can see right off the bat that she's got her heels in the correct position. She has a little toe angle. I can tell if the bar is over the middle of the foot. I may be able to tell it from a rear quarter if I know what I'm doing, but from a front quarter, it makes it a little bit easier. And it'll be easier for you if you're watching it yourself to tell where the bar is. I can still see her hip height. She could even swing this camera out a few more degrees so I could see a little bit more of her back, but all in all, this is fine. And then I can watch as she lifts, do her knees come back too soon? Is she getting vertical shins? Are her shoulders staying out over the bar? How is her grip? The front quarter gives me a lot of information as she executes her deadlift. So when you're filming your deadlift, if it's the first time and you're uploading it or it's for yourself, start with a front quarter. Again, your coach may say, let me see this from the side. Let me see this from the back or whatever, but a front quarter is a great place to start. Okay, and lastly, we're gonna show you the bench press. And this is one that people mess up all the time. Actually, people mess up all of these all the time, but I'm gonna show you the bench press. We're gonna go to Phoenix, Arizona and visit my buddy Jamie. So here he is, big Yale guy Jamie is, and look how he's set up on the bench. He has the camera where I can see his feet, I can see where he's gonna be at lockout, and I can also see where his elbows are in the bottom position of the bench. This is very important. We want the elbows just in front of the bar at the bottom of the bench. So if you show me from a rear quarter, I may not be able to see it. If you show me from the side, the plates can sometimes block the elbow. So a front quarter, once again, higher, shot down, is a good way to shoot the bench. So if you watch it here, he unracks, boom, he gets set, 
He's dealing with taking his butt off of the bench. It's an issue he's been having, so he pulled his feet back a little excessively to try and keep that from happening. And you can see he hits himself at the chest. He has these spotter arms here, so I can't see his elbows perfectly, but I'd rather him have the spotter arms than not. But what he could do was bring the camera out a little bit so I could see that elbow. But I can tell from watching this where his elbow is in the bench, and I can see the entire lift as it touches his chest. I can see if his butt is coming off the bench. I can see what's happening with his feet. Jamie, do me a favor and quit moving around so much between reps. But you get the idea for the camera angle. And nobody wants to see a direct on crotch shot when you're bench pressing. Do some type of oblique, please. Okay, and lastly, one thing that you'll notice in all those videos when those people uploaded those videos for me was what? Each video was trimmed to the start of the lift. I don't know what a lot of you guys do before the lift, but what I know is a lot of times the video is three minutes long for a set of three. There's a trip to the water fountain, you're hitting on your gym crush, you're circling the squat rack 17 times, you're walking up to the bar, you're saying your Hail Mary's full of grace, all kind of preamble. Just squat, and when you're done, grab that little trim button, that little ed edit button on your iPhone, drag it to the start of the lift, Grab all that little post-party high five and stuff, drag that ending to the left and show me the lift. If you want me to watch your lift, that's what I want. Now, with that said, occasionally and very seldomly, people's issue are taking the bar out of the rack. Maybe the way they're going under in the squat is causing some kind of pain in their arm. Maybe the way they're taking their press out is messing up their grip, uh, the way they're taking their bench out. But let me tell you, hey, I wanna see your setup. Otherwise, just trim that video down to the conduct of your lift. It may not seem like it, but all of this is important. And every time you record yourself, you have information that you can go back to and relate to. I can't tell you how fun it is to go back and look at a video five years ago today and see what you were lifting. Hopefully you got stronger. Hopefully you've been consistent. Also keep your logbook. But record, record, record. Record yourself lifting. You don't have to keep the videos forever, but look at it. See what you're doing. Hey, if you want free help, I help people for free on X all the time. Tag at Grant SSC and post your lift. If you'll put some skin in the game and post it publicly, I'll give you a free form check. I don't care. If you want more consistent coaching, you can hire us with this type of service or you can join our Slack for $29 a month or you can coach yourself. Remember, in the long run, you're going to have to keep doing this yourself so you need to know what you're looking at. Hope this video helps. If it does, please like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.